What is going on everyone? Chris with Journals, Comics, and Pop Culture. Today, we are going to be talking about the biggest myth in comic collecting. Before we get into addressing that, if you aren't subscribed to the channel, please take some time to do so. Check out all the links in the description below, including the link to today's sponsor, PopCultureZone.com. If you are in need of any online comic book shopping, including incentives in CGC and graded goodness, check them out. Uh, stay tuned towards the end of the video to see a 60 second clip about popculturezone.com as well. And of course, guys, I'm here almost every single day of the week making content for all of you. So the biggest myth in comic collecting, guys, let's, let's talk about it. Um, this video was inspired by conversation that I received in the comments on a recent video that I did addressing a, a situation where I was looking into possibly purchasing a collection and there was a little bit of a bait and switch going on. I did that video to try to educate both collectors and buyers as well. So there was a lot of pushback against me saying that, you know, I'm a slimy lowball flipper of comics and, and all this other stuff. Then there was some, you, you, you know, feedback that was seemed negative, but I think people had good intent, but it boiled down to the fact that I think people don't understand both sides of the coin when it comes to the comic book hobby as a business, both as a seller and somebody looking to sell off a collection, right? I am going to do a live stream touching on that broad spectrum of things, but today we're going to focus on one thing that came up in that discussion. And that's this, all comic books are not valuable and all comic books do not appreciate in value as they age. So the root of my argument is this today. If somebody buys comic books from the 90s for $1.75 or $1.99 a book, or maybe in the early 2000s for $2.99 a book because that's what the cover price was on many of them and then it went up to $3.99. So for the last 12 years, we've been paying $3.99 for the cover price of a comic book. So say you've been collecting for 20, 25 years and you have you know a good sized collection of maybe five long boxes, 10 long boxes, whatever it may be, and most of it is 90s and 2000s stuff. You probably bought them, maybe as a kid or a young adult, purchasing them off of the racks from your comic book store, paying cover price. Now, you have this big collection and you want to sell it, and you're thinking that those comic books should have appreciated in value, when the reality is that is the greatest myth and the, 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 the bigger truth to this is that a large majority of your books have probably depreciated. Now, another thing you need to take into consideration, all your books might not be in near mint condition like they were when you purchased it off the shelf. Now, let me preface this before I dive deep into my argument and say that, yes, comic books are a sound investment. I've argued this on my channel multiple times, and I've had people come at me saying, oh, you're crazy if you think comma books are a good investment. Da, 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 da. Nope. I will stand firm and talk about until I'm blue in the face how comma books are indeed a sound investment. But that doesn't mean every single comic book that's ever made or that you have ever purchased, right? We got to still understand that although comma books are a collectible, there's collectability, which creates investment value. Of course, we've seen this going back into the 60s. We saw it really take flight in the 70s when people really started saying, hey, these can be worth something. And that evolved into the 80s when people started protecting them with bags and then boards and saying, okay, there's something here, right? But we also have to understand that comic books are still a item a product that has another purpose. And that purpose is to be read. It is a book, just like any other book, just like a magazine that you may buy off the shelf of a grocery market, or just like a book that you buy from a Barnes and Noble. 
Comic books are a product. And the majority of products that you purchase from stores, whether it's brick and mortar stores, retail stores, or online, whether it's household products, um, whether it's technological products like electronics or so forth, cars, clothing, right? Any type of product that we purchase, what happens to that product the moment that we buy it? It depreciates in value. And as it gets older, it continues to depreciate in value. And also, as we use it, it depreciates in value. So with clothes, every time I put this hat on or every time I put this shirt on and wear it and then wash it, it depreciates depreciates in value, right? And hopefully one day, maybe I paid $14.99 for the shirt. Maybe one day I could sell it in a garage sale for a dollar or two. Maybe, right? This still holds true with comic books. Certain comic books. This is why when people have large collections, you can't just sit there and say, I demand a value of these books because I've put X amount of money into them. I've put X amount of money bagging and boarding them. Money and time. None of that matters. None of it matters whatsoever. Uh, let's see. I mean, I got some comic books right here. So these comic books were $3.99 each. This is a Vertigo comic. Uh, I think it came out in the in the... 2000s, uh, Imaginary Fiends, okay, it was a mini series, or a limited series, I've never, I've never read it, I mean, it, it looks kind of cool, it looks creepy, it's kind of like a horror story, and uh, I may have wanted to buy these just to read the story, right, and I would have had to pay $3.99 each, so I had my whatnot sale yesterday, and it's a book of four, I started an auction, I believe it, at five bucks, $5 starting bid. That's $1.25 each, right? $1.25 each. Nobody bid on it. Nobody bid on it. Nobody wanted it. Why? When these books cost $3.99 each, that's, that's four times four, that's $16. So you're telling me, and they're, look, they're in, they're in near mint condition. They are still in near mint condition. So you're telling me that comic books, because they're uh, an investment, because they're a collectible, that I spent $16 on these books and then I went out and bought nice bags and boards. Look at this. I rebagged and boarded them in these nice, clean, archival bags and boards. So I took the time and spent more money to make them look nice. And you're telling me that I can't even get what I paid for them? That I can't even get five bucks when I paid 16. I can't even get a third about of what I paid for them. And the answer is absolutely yes. Because nobody cares about buying these books as an investment. As a collectible. Nobody. People are willing to pay $3.99 for this book when it comes out. Because... It's a story and people might be interested in that story when it comes out and they want to read it. They read issue one and they're like, oh man, I can't wait for issue two. They go to the LCS when issue two comes out, they spent $3.99 for that issue. They read it and they're like, oh man, excited, excited. It's the same reason why if you're really into a combo book series, you'll pay $2.99 or $3.99 for a digital download. It's not about the collectability of it. It's about what are you willing to pay for a product that provides you a, uh, a, a, a it, it gives you value and the value is the story. Let's look at this book right here. This is a book from the nineties. It's amazing. Spider-Man 349 cover price was $1. Now, for a long time, this book didn't have too much value at all, right? And if it has value today, it's going to need to be in a, in a decently higher grade, you know? And the thing is, Spider-Man, 
let's look at the, the what value does this book give us outside of the story? What makes comic books collectible? First off, who's in it? Spider-Man. Spider-Man has intrinsic value outside of the story because it's a character that we enjoy and there's collectability there. Okay? Age also matters. It does. As we age out, you can find more value in comic books because of the collectability. There's more or less out there. As they age out, there's less in higher grade condition and so forth, right? So I'm willing to say that now, 30 years later, I could probably get more than I put into this book. I put in a dollar plus like 15 cents for a new bag and board. Now, this book technically is a fine plus. So, you know, I might only be able to get $2 out of it. Maybe, maybe three on a good day uh, because it's not, a, you know, it's got a lot of wear on it. But if this was a near mint, this could go for, for five, six dollars for sure. Because there's value there to be had. It doesn't mean it's going to get you rich or anything like that. But you could get more out of it than you put in, right? Let's look at these. This is another lot that I tried to sell them. I would not sell. Yesterday. We got Superman. This came out in what, 89? I believe this was uh, 89. This is, yep, August 89. Superman number 34. This is a 75 cent cover, right? Uh, this is a 90 Superman. This is Ash Comics 667 with a 175 cover. All right, that's 250. And this is a late, uh, no, mid 90s uh, Superman 118 with a 195, so a $2 cover. So I put 450 into these books, plus bagging and boarding them, right? 450. I auctioned these off at. $4 for the set, just over a dollar each, right? What's that, about a dollar 33 each? Nobody bid on it. Nobody bid on it. And these are, uh, this is fine, very fine. This is near mint. This one is probably fine, very fine as well. I couldn't get what I put in. Now, you're thinking, well, Superman... People like Superman, but there's other intrinsic reasons of why we value comics. There's so many of these out there. There's so many of these out there that it really doesn't benefit a collector to pay even that much that I was offering it for because maybe they can find them in a dollar bin and pay even less. Maybe a lot of people have them in their collection. And real collectors don't care about even collecting them. you got to take all these things into consideration when you're looking at comic books as an investment. And thinking, are, are these comic books going to appreciate in value? So when you go to the conversation about, well, I have all these boxes of comic books. I must be able to sell them for a high dollar amount. And as I stated, as I stated before, and I'll state again briefly here. And it's also a myth to think that the more comics you have to sell at once, the more money you're going to get out of it. It's the complete opposite. Unless you got a, a collection of all Golden Age and Silver Age stuff, right? The more books that you have in a collection, the less you're going to get per, per book because you're tending to the reseller and the dealer market. You're, you're, you're putting your collection out there for them to put their eyes on it. Collectors don't buy in bulk like that. Collectors want to spend their money on keys, on real investments, on books that are solid investments for them. Low risk investment, blue chip investments. Or collectors want to collect what they're specifically passionate about. Maybe a specific superhero or character. Maybe a specific title that they're trying to fill because they collect runs. And, and they, don't, they don't care if you have a whole bunch of um, you know, Daredevil books from the 80s and 90s and you're trying to sell them for a dollar a piece and you have like three boxes full and you want you, you know four hundred dollars for them say roughly a dollar a piece they don't care about that 
they may they may have 20 Daredevil books from the 80s and 90s that they'd be willing to pay maybe more than a dollar a book for. Maybe they'd be willing to pay two, three, even four dollars a book for. But all they want is those twenty dollars. They'd be willing to pay a, or 20 books. They'd be willing to pay a premium for those 20 books. And that premium for those 20 books would still not add up anywhere close to four hundred dollars. So why are they gonna dish four hundred dollars out for four boxes of books that they have no need for? So to sit here and act like collectors that are selling collections are entitled to get get out what they put in is a myth. It's the biggest myth in this hobby. And it's also a huge myth to think that just because you have a large sum of a collection that you're entitled to getting some type of top dollar for it. Especially if you have a collection where, yeah, look, you know, maybe you have, maybe you have, let me even, I, I mean, I can't even, you know, maybe you have a few books I'm just going through. Maybe you have a few like, like books like this, like a Bronze Age um, Avengers in decent gray that you could get four or five dollars for maybe, right? But maybe the majority of it is this, indie 90s and 2000 stuff or you know you do got some some dc stuff in there but it's stuff that nobody wants maybe you got some marvel stuff like some thing stuff but it's in mid-grade it's it's read through it's beat up and it's it's not a main title that anybody really cares to collect or anybody sees in it as an investment generation x from the late 90s i mean right collectors I have to tell you this to tell you this humbly. You are not entitled to get out what you put in. And my biggest advice to you is this. If you want top dollar for your book, for your books, you have to put the work in. If you want top dollar and close to fair market value as you want, go through your collection, grade it, price it out, and put in the work. Break it down to small lots or sell individually. Because unless you got a collection where you know exactly what you what you have and you have decent stuff mixed in with the with the stuff that's not gonna sell, you're never gonna sell the stuff that's not gonna sell. It'll be sitting there in your possession, and you won't make any money off of it. This is why individuals that want to sell in bulk. Under, most of them understand this. The ball is in your court to figure out how you guys want to gauge your collection when it comes time to sell. But you have to ground yourself and plant your feet in the ground and realize that you are not entitled to get out what you put in. It just doesn't work that way. We're going to continue on this topic of discussion, folks. Like I said, we are going to have a live stream real soon on my channel to really dive into uh, the business side of this hobby, the reselling, right? The dealers and the flippers and the LCSs that buy in bulk that pay 10 to 20 cents a comic book. And we're going to talk more about what that means, why that is, and why us collectors shouldn't automatically shun these offers don't get me wrong there's a lot of people out there wanting to lowball just to lowball and they're going to be slimy and they're going to talk circles around you and try to slime you out of of something that might be worth more but you got to be able to learn how to differentiate the two a feasible buyer that's being reasonable next to some real truly slimy unethical someone that you shouldn't trust so we're going to dive more into that in the soon, soon. So make sure you guys are subscribed. Uh, hit that notification bell to get notified on all my videos and live streams that I do. Leave your thoughts in the comments below on this video today. Thank you all so much for watching. And again, guys, stick around uh, for that Pop Culture Zone 60 second snippet. Check them out. Link below, popculturezone.com. Thank you guys for watching. Be well. And until next time. PopCultureZone.com is an online shop focusing on hot new comics, including exclusive and incentive variants, CGC graded comics, and tons of other inventory, including pop culture toys and other collectibles, 
all at low and competitive prices. PopCultureZone.com ships all over the U.S. And if you are buying raw comics, they offer flat rate shipping of only $4.99. That's right, $4.99. Absolute craziness, right? And there's no taxes included, excluding New Jersey. Pop Culture Zone is also on eBay, where they hold a 100% positive feedback rating with over 8,000 completed transactions for this year alone. Make sure to check out the link to their website below, as well as their eBay link, so be sure to give them a follow there as well.